Hello and welcome to another episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White and in this episode we're going to take a look at using the new edge detection features to extract an image from the background when the background is not a simple color. I've shown this technique before but I get lots of questions still continuously. How does this work when the background is not all one color, not all white, not all gray, not all green? So I've um, been on tour and I've been showing this particular image and I thought, you know what, this might make a good podcast episode to kind of help people understand that yes, it does work when the color is not a simple solid color. Now, I, you know, I, I wish I had a more elaborate background to show you, but this is the background I have. So let me tell you what's going on here. I've got an image. This is an image of, of my friend Rita. And we, we can zoom in on Rita's hair, and we can see that, you know, I kind of had the fan going when I took this picture, and hair was blowing all over. So we got some red, some orange, some different colors in the background, different shades. Uh, if we zoom around here, just different things going on. Oops, different things going on in the background. Now, granted, the backgrounds are, you know, different colors, but they are solid colors, but it doesn't matter. They don't have to be the same color. And if you had a more complex background, it really depends on how close the background color is to the subject's color. So, for example, if I'm trying to extract her black hair off a black background, that's going to be harder. But if I'm extracting her hair off green, red, orange, whatever, any other color, bricks, any other um, pattern, as long as it's not the same as the, pro or the product or person you're trying to extract, then it'll be a lot easier. So that's the way it works. The more difficult or the same they are, the harder it's going to be. The more different or contrast they are, the easier it's going to be. So that's the way it works. So let's take a look. Now I've also done, uh, I've, I've taken a liberty of dragging the Rita image onto the background that I really want to composite it on. So if you look at my layers panel over here, I've got two layers, my uh, new background that I want it to be on, and of course Rita with her uh, red stripe cloth kind of thing going on here. So once again, this is how the process works. You start with a selection. You can make your selection with any tools you want. I like to start with Quick Select because as the name implies, it is a Quick Select tool. Now I'm using a Wacom tablet. Um, of course, I prefer to use a Wacom tablet when I'm in Photoshop, but you can certainly do this with a mouse. It just won't be as easy. Now, Quick Select is not the most accurate select, so it kind of jumped up there and grabbed something else. Don't worry about that. I'll take care of that in a moment. I'll just go ahead and make sure I get all the areas I want before I worry about taking out the areas I don't want. Okay, so now I don't want this area up here, so I'm going to hold down my Option key on the Mac or Alt key on Windows to kind of subtract some of this area going around the hair. And, you know, quick select, it's going to do the best it can, but it's just ne it was never designed for these soft, frizzy ed edges like hair. So, it, it, you know, I can kind of get in closer, kind of get more of the hair, but it's never going to be a great selection of hair. It's just a tool that wasn't designed for that. Now we've got an area in here. I'm just going to make my brush smaller. Hold down my Option or Alt key to kind of subtract that. And as quick select, as the name implies, it gave us a quick selection of Rita. Now, it, if, this, if it did a perfect selection of the hair, we wouldn't need anything else. But that's the whole point. It's not designed for hair. So I'm just going to go ahead and just maybe clean that up a little bit more, knowing that that's about as good as it's going to get with this tool. Okay, so now that you have any selection made, you know, again, with any selection tool you prefer, you'll notice that as long as you're on a selection tool, you'll have the choice of refine edge, and that's where the new magic appears in CS5. Now, there was a refine edge button in CS4, but it's, you know, it's totally different technology. It's brand new technology in CS5, brand new dialog box, brand new everything. So when I click refine edge in CS5, I get the Refine Edge dialog box. Now let me show you where it starts off. I have the ability to look at the marching ants, which is what we were looking at before we came into this. A red overlay, and again, this is kind of showing me the mask I would have now as a red overlay with the horrible selection around the hair. I can look at it on black, which again, showing me some of the red and orange and different colors that are blending in. I can look at it on white, 
same thing. I can see areas I missed, areas that it did good, areas it didn't do good on. Black and white, again, I can see how hard edged that mask is. I also see an area up there I'd want to fix. And my favorite one when I've already drugged the image onto its uh, new background is I get to see it on layers. I get to see it against the background that it's ultimately going to be on anyway. So that's the one I'm going to go with. I'm just going to click out of this. And now we see it on the existing background, but we're in this dialog box to continue working on it. So the next step, and again, we can, uh, we can you know, just go all the way down the, the box here, is the edge detection feature. And this is, again, new technology inside of CS5. And as, um, as we've done different selections in all the previous versions of Photoshop, all of the tools that we've come out with to do selections were always targeted at one type of selection or the other. For example, we had this great extract filter. The extract filter was really designed for hair, soft edges, things like fur, but not really good for hard edges. Then we had uh, the quick select, you know, that we introduced, I believe, in CS4. Again, great for those hard edge selections. But what we didn't have was a good way to do both at the same time, soft edges and hard edges. So that's what this edge detection will do. Now we have a nice hard edge around the shoulder, but of course softer edges around the hair. And what this will do is when I turn on Smart Radius, well, nothing happens until, while the slider is on zero. But if I drag this over, it will start to soften up the hair and sharpen up the edges that it needs to keep sharp. So I can keep, continue to drag this over. And like any slider, at some point, you're going to start getting too much. You're going to start bringing in too much of the old background. So you'll need to, you know, and I'll exaggerate it here. You can see where it's it's starting to bring in a lot of the fuzz, which is a good thing, but it may be bringing in too much or softening up. As I'm starting to lose some of the shoulder in there. So again, like any slider, you know, you have to pick your best point of where you get the best results for the image you're working on. So I kind of want the hair soft, but I still want the shoulders sharp. So I'll kind of pick a midpoint there where I'm getting the kind of the best of both worlds. If I go back down now, that looks pretty good too. All right, so I could play with that for about five minutes, but I think you get the idea. <clears throat> Pick a point, wherever that point is, and again, if you go too far, you'll, you'll definitely get the soft edges around the hair, but then you'll start to lose the other edges that you may want. Okay, so next, to the left of that, is the Refine Radius tool. And I've shown this tool before. This tool is designed to clean up the edges that you may have missed, that you didn't mean to get, that you, uh, that, that edges or colors, like for example, I can still see some of the red under her chin from the old background. That's what this tool is for. It's a good cleanup tool to kind of refine your selection. That's why it's called Refine Radius. And it is selected by default. So the minute I come over here, I have a nice brush that I can work with. I can uh, make that brush bigger or smaller just like you would any other painting tool inside of Photoshop. And you notice it also has a target in the middle of it. That little plus sign is designed to target the original background. So as I drag around, you'll start to see the original background color come in. But what it's doing is I'm telling it that's the color I don't want. You can bring in anything else within the radius of the brush that's not that color. So what I do is I end up getting more of the hair because the hair wasn't the red that I started with, but so it starts to bring in those other colors like the black of her hair. So here, let's go ahead and zoom in a little on the shoulders here, or I'm sorry, not the shoulder, but the chin. We'll go back to the refine radius, and I'll just tell it that I don't want that part of red underneath there. Now, uh, the other problem, and again, this is with that uh, radius shift here that I was doing, starting to bring out or starting to lose too much of that shoulder so I can start pulling that back um, to kind of sharpen that edge up. So that's again, that's a, a brush or slider that you're going to have to play with till you get the result that you want. Now, if it's starting to cut in too much because there was like a black stripe, I believe, going up on one of those cloths, so it's starting to eliminate some of the hair. You can also do the opposite. So you can hold down the option key and you can say, that's the color I do want, and it'll start to bring that color back in. So you, and there's, that's the part I did not want. There we go. 
So you'll basically go around refining the edge of your selection to bring in the areas or colors that you want or get rid of the ones you don't want. So again, continue to work on that. And I could spend all day kind of just going around, refining the edges, making sure I got it. But I just wanted to point out, this is how this tool works. And as you, can, as you saw when I started, I did not start with a simple background, a simple one color. It's got multiple colors in there, so that, that's why it requires a little bit more refining. Now, let's go ahead and zoom out a little bit on this. We're doing pretty good. Let's go back into Refine Edge here. And let's take a look at a couple more controls. Now, I don't often work with the, um, I'm just going to pull that up just a little bit. I don't often work with the smooth feather and contrast for these type of selections, but I do work with shift edge. And this is another way of kind of tightening up that selection so I can expand it, have it go out and grab more if I was, I'm exaggerating, but if I was missing more of the background, I can get more. If I wanted to pull it in tighter, kind of get it tighter around my subject, then I can do that as well. So you can use the shift edge to kind of tighten up that selection just a little bit on one area or another, or one direction or another. Now I'm going to point out or zoom into an area here behind the head. Let's move this over. Where we're kind of getting some of the red from that uh, cloth that was behind her head reflecting onto her hair. That's what this decontaminate colors is for. When you turn this on, see here, I turn it off, you can kind of see the red in the hair here. When I turn it on, her hair kind of goes back to the black, gray color or lighter color that it is. So that's decontaminating the background color, which sometimes reflects onto your subject. Now, when you do a decontaminate, you automatically get the selection of, it will put all of this on a new layer with a layer mask. But even if you didn't choose that, um, you, you can, or if you wanted to change it, you can change it any way you want. Okay, so, and if I didn't choose it, I can still change it to put it on a new layer with a layer mask. So I'm going to go ahead and say decontaminate colors, and again, that's a slider. I think the default 50 at this point is pretty good, but if you need it to decontaminate more or less, you can do that. So if, I, if I'm thinking that's desaturating that color a little bit too much, I can back off of it or increase it if I think it wasn't enough. And again, I think the 50 was right about right. Okay, so if, if you do this a lot, and these are the settings you like, you can also say remember settings, and that means that every time you come in here, it'll do it this way. But, you know, for me, every image is different. I don't always use the exact same settings, or my settings vary. So in this case, now what? When I click OK, the beauty of new layer with layer mask is that it will hide my original, but keep it, and give me a brand new layer with an editable mask that I can now turn on, turn off, see the mask, work with the mask, refine the mask, adjust the mask. So for example, if I didn't like some of her hair here, I can just go ahead and end this with a black paintbrush and kind of refine that hair out. I've got my brush turned down a bit here. Let's go ahead and refine some of that. So I'm basically hiding it. I'm not deleting her hair, I'm just eliminating it. Now, again, that's her hair. That's the way it looked. But now that I see it against the other background, well, maybe I don't want it as messy as it was here with that windblown look. So I can go in and adjust that mask. Okay? So there you have it. That's it, folks. Using the new edge detection and refine radius tools inside of CS5 to remove an image from a background that where the background is not all one simple solid color, and again, it will vary depending on the background you're working on and how close that background color is to the subject that's against it. Black on black or white on white or green on green is going to be harder than black on orange or green on red or you know any two other colors. And if there's a pattern in it, it should work okay. It'll just depend on the pattern if it's not the same that's on the subject. So with that, Thanks again, folks. Hope you enjoyed this episode of the Adobe Creative Suite podcast. My name is Terry White. We'll catch you next time.